Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us at the Orlando Magic HQ for another space. And baby, we are back in the win column. The Magic got the dub tonight. I'm your host, Stanley Swanson. Ladies and gentlemen, we got half off of Papa John's tomorrow. Let's get live. Cue the music. Shouts out to the Magic tonight. Man. He's been slumping. He's had a few bad games. Not tonight. He got to New Orleans and had him some gumbo, and Paolo Bancaro came out hooping tonight. Straight baller. 20 points in the second half. We needed the buckets. We needed points. We needed a go-to guy tonight. And Paolo took the team and put it on his shoulders. Shouts out to him. I'm going to go down the list, man. Shouts out, Paolo. Shouts out, Franz. Shouts out, Markel. Shouts out the entire starting lineup, Gary Harris. There was a moment in the fourth quarter where the Pelicans seemed to be making that run, and then they they got a, they tied the game, and it was like, what's going on? We had control of the game for the good part of the game, and then those final minutes in that fourth it just became so just pressure and i'm I, i'm sure I, I was the same as all you guys sitting at home on the edge of your seats just watching this game like no this cannot be possible we fought this game we got the dub tonight we're back in the win column i know we had a setback with the last game in terms of our playing push but we're back at it i feel really good about the way we were shooting tonight, confidence, confidence, confidence. Wendell started the game with two early fouls. That's something that this is the second game in a row that has happened. Uh, Mose definitely has to talk to him about. You don't want to tell a guy to start less aggressive, but just in the fashion that he's starting to need these past couple games, you know, there, there's something that he could do better, especially going into a Milwaukee game. We'll see. I, I don't believe Giannis is playing, so we'll see what, what happens there. But, man, shouts out to this team. We got the dub tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to go ahead and open up the court. I don't want to take up too much of the time. Bryce, you saw the game. The Magic got the dub tonight. How you feeling, man? Man, I'm hype after that one, Stan. Bro, that was a nice win, especially after getting the, the bad taste of um, the other day against Indiana out of our mouths. Bro, this one was this one had me on the edge of my seat. Um, we definitely knew it was going to be close. I mean, the game was close pretty much the whole entire game. Um, but first, I want to give a shout-out to Coach Mose for getting the guys ready after that loss against Indiana because I'm sure, like, we all saw that press conference. Those guys' heads were down. You know, morale was low. But Coach Mose rallied the troops, uh, came into New Orleans, and got the dub tonight, man. Uh, like you said, Paulo, it looks like it was going to be one, one of those nights for Paulo like it has been the last month. But in the third quarter, he started to get to the free throw line, and he started to find his stuff, man. The three's still not falling for him, but in, in that fourth quarter, man, he was hitting clutch shots after clutch shot. And, you know, he carried us on our back. We needed the, that scoring especially late in the game. And the other shout-out I want to make is the team defense in the fourth quarter with, like, six minutes left to go. We had Brandon Ingram and C.J. McCollum in shambles. Brandon Ingram was was upset. He was mad at the officiating. Bro, we were just playing great defense. Franz especially um, Brent, on Brandon Ingram down the stretch. He had that nice uh, draw charge. Um, and then just a couple – like. It just was a swarm of defense. Like, those guys were upset. You know, they were looking to the officials to make calls and just overall, like, flustered based on our team defense, man. I I recently, like, that effort hasn't necessarily been there, whereas today, man, we were ready to play. Um, yeah, you just love to see that down the stretch. You're stopping these stars from scoring. It just it just made me excited, bro. I'm I'm excited for Wednesday. I hope we can break the Bucks streak. But what a bounce back after Saturday's loss, man. I'm so proud of these guys. No, definitely. And and not only did they play high defense, Markel and Paolo, high IQ plays on the offensive end when they didn't see anything inbounding the ball. 
and well, I guess poor Paolo wasn't inbounding the ball. It was he got double teamed, and instead of throwing the ball away, and you know, in those occasions, young players tend to throw the ball away, and that would have been a four point swing for New Orleans. These guys called the timeouts, and that that was just just having the IQ to say, okay, there's nothing there. Let me take this timeout. We had timeouts in our in our pocket, so shouts out to them for that, man. And another shout out, hey man, shouts out Mo Wagner. He talks his talk every single game. Nobody can tell Mo Wagner anything. Mo, it, that dude, when he hit that three, that's that that bank three, and he just started talking his smack, man. Like yo, shouts out to Mo. Shouts out to that guy and something I, I i noticed throughout the game and i'm not gonna harp on it too much tonight because we got the dub so is the the chuma okiki dmp i think a lot of us a month ago were saying oh we got chuma on the burner he he's he's coming back and he's kind of lining up the dmps at this point i don't know if i know somebody said last game that his knee might have been wrapped up i didn't see anything of that sort today so that that's definitely something to keep in mind moving forward. The Chuma minutes where we haven't really got anything, but it was a great game, phenomenal game, man. That Pelicans team they did not want to go away at all. They just continued to fight, continued to fight, and continued to fight. And Palo, guys, twenty time or thirty times this season. This guy has gone for more than 20 points. Like, our rookie is really, really hooping. I, I, I know he's going through a slump, so a lot of us were, were on him for a while. But, guys, this, this, what this guy has been doing this season is very, very special. I just want to make sure I take a, time, a moment to recognize that our rookie, man, he put this team on his shoulders and he took us to the promised land tonight, especially when, it was solid from our starters, but it wasn't – it was 11 from Franz. It was 11 from Wendell. You know, Markel, a lot – I would I would say tonight is somewhere – a night where I wanted him to be a little bit more aggressive, but I'm not mad at him because he was very active and, he, you know, so shouts out Markel. But overall, guys, this was a great team win. Shouts out to the Orlando Magic. Rich, you were up next before we go over to Ty. Rich, what do you got for us, man? You know, honestly, man, this was this was a such a good game just to watch, man. Like the team really, like the team was just doing its job. They had to fight so many times. They were making mistakes, but I like how each time they made a mistake, they tried to fight back. Even when they were on a run, they were like, "All right, let's take this time out, sit down, figure it out." So I was really like, good, really good to see that. Paulo showing up. Really, really, really good. I really was really happy about that, man. Paulo did the job. Paulo did what he needed to do. Uh, I was really good to see him, like, not only break 20 points again, but just have a game where he just completely took over. It really carried us. And, like, I was amazing. Franz getting that solid 11. Honestly, I was good with Franz only getting 11 because I will say this, and, like, this has been brought to, I think, a lot of uh, Magic fans' attention, and I've been watching a lot more. Because Franz was locked in defensively. He might have been making, like, kind of got a few calls on him. But, bro, like, he was on everybody. Didn't matter who had the ball. So, I, you got to give Franz a shout out on that. Uh, but other than that, man, like, yo, everyone, like like I said, everyone did their job. Fultz was out there, like, making some crazy passes. He had that one pass to Wendell in the post. Oof, that was crazy. So, and then, like, yeah, and then, like, Wendell was doing his job, too, man. Like, I, I'm really proud of, like, everyone who showed up tonight. It's I think the funniest thing for me in the end, honestly, and, like, the best thing for me is that, like, even seeing that MCW didn't play, like, he was this biggest hype man for Paulo on the bench, man. That made me happy, seeing that, like, it doesn't matter who we bring in, this team is still a unit, and they still have this culture that they built. So, that's how I feel about this game. Uh, and, yeah, man. No, the, the culture is continuing to get better. We're, we're definitely getting into that Michael uh, Carter-Williams signing. A, a little bit later because I think that took a lot of us as a surprise. I, I saw Maddie World tweet a couple of days ago saying, it's 2024, the Magic will not be signing Michael Carter Williams. And, man, I woke up yesterday, I looked at my notifications, and somehow we signed Michael Carter Williams. So we'll, we'll definitely get to that 
right now, I'm going to say he was a positive presence or presence because, ladies and gentlemen, we got half off of Papa John's tomorrow. Shouts out to MC Dub. He did that for us. Ty, you were up next. The Pelicans fell short. I know you're not happy about it, but you got to witness the magic hoop, man. How you feeling about it right now? First of all, you're an asshole, but good day, good day. Uh, good day. Um, look, uh, I obviously hosted my in space because I needed to vent because I didn't want to take over and vent here, so I'll say this. Marco Fultz played really good today. I feel like he didn't play enough. I don't know why Cole played as many minutes as he did. I'm happy he did because it's, it's what kind of kept us in the game, so thank you, Cole Anthony, for being a terrorist. <laughs> but, yeah, Marco had just a really all-around good game, good defense, you know what I mean? Being a typical underrated playmaker, which he is, you know what I mean? Uh, finishing in transition, so Kel had a good game. Uh, yeah, Paul, I don't know what to say, man. Paulo Bencaro, he just hezzy hezzy tween, sidestep, mid range, something which CJ McCollum wishes he could do in his fucking life for once. But yeah, um, you know, the best player on the team closed out the game how it's supposed to be, so shout out to Paulo. And I'm fucking pissed. I, I mean, I am. Pissed off that Mo Wagner had a good game. Because I could tell... What was it? He got like an ad one or something? It was like a free point of bank shot? And he's talking this shit. He's like, I want these. I'm like, I want to fucking hit this guy over across the head. <laughs> like, it was irritating me. My goodness. But yeah, that's a good one for you guys. We continue to be terrorists. Uh, it is fuck Willie Green in New Orleans. Uh, yeah, that, that's really old, man. No, and <laughs> Stan... And Stan, I mean, he got to see the greatest young core in the league play basketball. Today. Hey, I was just going to oh, say that. Okay. <laughs> I was no. just going to say that. It's hilarious, man. It's shouts out. In all reality, shouts out to the Pelicans. They gave the Magic a tough time tonight. It wasn't enough on their end because, you know, the Magic, they're on a mission right now, ladies and gentlemen. They understand that they lost the last game. They weren't able to do to lose this game. Shouts out to them. Shouts out to you, Ty, because I, I know you recognize the Magic as as the best young core in, in the league, especially after what Paolo came into the Smoothie King Center and did. Like, that is why the Smoothie King Center, Paolo Carroll took care of that. So, great night overall, guys. I, I, I am very excited about this team's chances. Like I said, every game moving forward matters in terms of our play-in push. Man, great win tonight. Sam, you were up next. How you feeling right now? Tell me your hype. Feeling great. Feeling great. It's a good win. Another uh, night of holding the opponent under 100 points, which is always awesome. And I feel like we don't give this team enough credit because that really doesn't happen very often in the NBA these days. Um, so the fact that, you know, that happened is always nice. Um, anyone in here who uh, freaks out after losses, again, I feel like I say this to every Magic fan ever on Twitter and really any platforms, like, if you're going to be hyped after the wins, keep that same energy after losses. Um, if you're going to be excited about Paolo and excited about the potential and excited about what this team's doing, acknowledge that losing, regardless of what the opponent is, even like I looked at the Pacers win loss, they've lost, they've beaten the Celtics this year. They beat the heat this year. The Pacers have some good wins this year. They're a shooting team. Shooting teams get hot. Shooting teams do what they need to do. It happens sometimes deal with it. Um, but we're still six and a half games ahead of Charlotte. We're not catching them for lottery odds. Let the team play, let the team develop. Best case scenario, we make the play in. Worst case scenario, we get really high quality development minutes with games that matter for these guys. Um, and another thing is, I really feel like we got to give Paolo um, a little bit of, of a break. Like, I get that he's the number one overall pick, but you have to remember he's still a rookie. Um, and with Franz, we've seen the leap that he's made and just the polished uh, aspects of his game from year one to year two. Um, and we're talking about like being patient because he's like in the middle of a rookie slump. Take a step back, everyone, and realize that if this is a slump for Paolo and he's still doing some of the things that he's doing, then we got a good player. And that's something that we need to celebrate a little more often than we're celebrating. Instead of focusing on the down, down weeks and you know off games and, oh, why isn't his three-point shot there? Focus on the fact that we got a stud. Like 25 teams in the NBA, and maybe not 25, but 20 teams in the NBA would kill to have a guy who could just have the rock in his hand. They get me the ball. I'm going to ball out, and I'm going to make things happen like he did tonight. And there's so few teams that just have a guy that has that dog, especially a guy that's so young. He's 20, and, and he's got that dog in him, which is awesome. 
I feel like we just need to give him a little bit more room to develop. Uh, and the last thing I'll say super quick is I think that teams aren't used to the magic brand of basketball. And I've been noticing recently how frustrated teams get when they play us because yeah, there are a few, obviously a few fouls that don't get called either way because it's the NBA and that happens. But a lot of times what these teams are facing is just high quality, intense, almost like eighties, nineties NBA defense. And they're not used to that. And these guys are used to being able to, you know, ISO and have space to play and have space to make these moves and make these passes. And when the magic are just clogging passing lanes and playing up against these guys, they're not used to being able to play that way. And you mentioned earlier, Bryce, you said, you know, uh, Ingram getting pissed off and McCollum getting pissed off and all these guys getting pissed off. And it's just like, I'm rewatching these replays. Like there's no fouls. It's just good, tight, tight defense that these guys in the modern NBA aren't used to playing against. Um, and I feel like that's built for the playoffs. And I'm really excited about that moving forward. And last thing I'll say is Vegas had this team at 26 and a half wins before the season. We're at 26. And there's no way in hell we're not getting at least one more win the rest of the season. So screw Vegas. Orlando Magic. Play that song, baby. Let's yes, go. Sir, Jay, Jay you took that bet, right? Which one? one that you took the over for our wins, right? Oh, 100%. Hey, hey, shout out you, bro. <laughs> Yes, sir. Uh, that's just easy money for any coming into the season. Even not having watched Paolo and Franz and Wendell and Markel and all these guys play together, you knew Vegas was on to something, and what whatever they on wasn't good because twenty six and a half. We all knew this was a little too low for us. And right now, guys, we're we're, we're sitting really pretty. I know we're ten games under five hundred, but I think we're in a good position compared to last season. Our guys are hooping right now. They're confident. Man, I'm I'm excited for this Milwaukee game going. And 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 Sam, you, you, you said it. Paolo's a good player. And not only good, he's a great player. That th- those clutch shots down the down the stretch, that turnaround jumper, like man, whoever says the mid range game is is not you know, a, a valuable shot. They just don't know basketball because that's a bucket. A bucket in the NBA doesn't matter, and Paolo can get us a bucket. That's what matters. That three-point, he's a rookie, guys. I definitely made a, a, a the joke on my personal account, who's going to win a three-point contest right now, Dwight or Paolo. He's struggling. Paolo is struggling. That's fine. That's the one aspect of his game as a rookie that he has to get better of. I'll take that 10 out of 10 times because they had us drafting Jabari Smith first. So, ladies and gentlemen, I am perfectly fine with that one flaw because I know he's going to get in the gym in the offseason. Shouts out to this guy. He is already a hooper at the age of 20. Skinny, you up next before we go over to my man David. Skinny, how you feeling about the Magic tonight? Man, 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 you dig. That's another dub, man. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm not even gonna go too much, man, because, um, like I said the other night, if you're gonna if you're gonna be hype about them, you know, stick behind them when they lose. Um, I'm I'm excited to see this team win games like this, though, bro. Um, I say it usually after we win games like this. Markel said it the other night, like it's super impressive to see the the growth that this team has had from the beginning of the season. They just don't win games like this. Um, and at the same time, they don't even dominate a game the way that they did for the most part of this game. Like, we had that lead for the most part. Um, you know, we kind of let it go for a little bit. But you see the fight and resiliency that this team has, even with some, you know, questionable um, minutes given out, you know, um, still able to handle it. And then Paulo Banquero. Paulo, 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 man. I mean, they, there's not much that can be said about it, right? He's 20 years old, and he is just, like, controlling a – man, he's tough. Paulo is tough. If you didn't know, now you know. Ask your mama about him. She probably know. Um, for real, the man can hoop. Um, it's a good time to be a Magic fan, bro. I'm excited, man. I'm just – yeah, man, I'm just excited to hear everybody talk about it, man. I want to hear everybody be hype about it. Um, you know, even if we don't make the play-in – I know that's something that I'm I'm shooting for. I'm still going to be really, really, really happy with where this team finishes, man. They've, they've shown a lot, a lot of uh, improvement and a lot of hard work that they can really put in. And to having a healthy offseason to grow together, sky's the limit. So I'm really excited. Like you said, the improvement is there. 
no Magic fan at this point in the season could look at this team and say, oh, man, what the hell? Like, no, though, this team has shown improvement. They're, like Sam said, there's no way in hell they're not going to get that extra win to, to prove Vegas wrong. That's going to happen. 30 wins is already in the bag. At the beginning of the season, I had them at 32 wins. They might surpass those that expectation. They might be in that 35 range. Um, We'll, we'll see. Uh, Skinny, you got your hand up. What do you got for me? Oh, and, and shout out Cortez, bro. Facts. All of us Magic fans, if you follow Cortez on here, shout Cortez out, man. He traveled all the way to New Orleans, rep Orlando. He sat close to the front, had the hard Magic jacket on. Shout out oh, Cortez. 100% shout out Cortez. <laughs> Cortez, was, Cortez was having more function than the Magic game, though. <laughs> Skinny, he was having a blast there from the pictures anyway. Uh, Cortez was having a, like you said, Jay Black. He looked like a, a scout out there. I'm not sure exactly what he was scouting out there, but he looked like a scout out there. Shouts out to our, our, our Spaces guy, um, Cortez, man. He was out there enjoying the Magic Dub, ladies and gentlemen. David, you were up next. You saw the performance the Magic put on tonight. I know you're feeling good. Let us know. Yes, I'm feeling great. We're 26 and 35 now. It's, you know, it's a good sign. We're moving forward. You know, we're, we're, we're beating the Vegas odds, which I always thought we would. We would. In my opinion, if we would have had Markel Fultz from the beginning of the season, we'd be way ahead of this 26, you know, you know, win pace right now. But we're doing great. Paolo is money. You know, I don't even care if he had a he had a bad February, even though it was a down he, coming off the two rookie of the months. He still played great. He played great tonight, hitting all those mid range jumpers. Like you said, the mid range game is on point. Just just ask uh, Demar Rosen, who's Mister Mid Mid Ranger. The mid range is an important shot. You need to have a good mid range game. You have a good. Uh, he could get his three points up, but I think he will. Like you said in the off season. He's he's dedicated. He's gonna get in that. He's gonna get in the gym, get that three point game going. And once he gets that three point game going, it's lights out for the rest of the league. He could be a thirty point or more, you know, score if he has, if he gets a a thirty thirty five percent free uh, three point line shot. It's it's over, done. Put a fork in it. The Magic are playing great. We're getting great defense. Defense was on point tonight from start to finish. You know, Arkell's playing great. You know, we're getting great looks from Gary Harris. We're getting great, you know, all around play from Wendell. You know, the whole team's playing great right now. We're getting great bench play from Cole. The Magic are moving. No one wants to play us right now, in my opinion. You know, we're two and one on the week. You know, with wins over the Detroit Pistons and now the New Orleans Pelicans. I wish we was three in a row. That get, we'll forget about that game against the Pacers. But we're doing great. We're, I want to hit that playing tournament game. I want to get in the play. I want. We need, we need some some playoff experience and and like I said like I said if we don't get in there we do we're getting two most likely two lottery picks which there's this this draft is awesome this year it's a top heavy draft it's got a lot of good guards in it a lot of good shooters and that's what we need is more shooting on this team to help us out you know but all around match are playing great get that dub tonight you know, all those players were crying. They t- every time the Pelicans got a foul called on them, they were crying like little bitches. Especially Brandon Ingram on that one where he pushed off on Franz. I don't know how he didn't get a T on that call. He should have. He was in the ref's face. I would have teed him up. He would have stepped towards me if I was a ref. But let's go Magic. Get that dub. Let's go for two in a row. The next game, go Magic. I know, 100%, man. Go Magic. Magic City, ladies and gentlemen. Magic City. You, you, you touched on defense and, and something I, I don't one to take for granted. I want to make sure I shout this guy out every single space because he's a dog on the defensive end. He's everywhere. He is electric on the defensive end, and he's slowly but surely building his offensive game is Jalen Suggs, guys. He is just everywhere on the court. Shouts out to that guy. He Damn straight. Suggs is money on defense, and that shot is definitely coming around. The offensive game is coming around, but you can always rely on him for defense. He, there are some calls he didn't get tonight, and there's some calls that were questionable that were called on him tonight. These referees need to stop dogging the magic. You know, I'm telling you, we get the worst refs ever. Nah, I don't know what their deal is, but all around the entire league this year, it doesn't matter if it's just the magic, the refs are sucking this year. Yeah, no, I mean, Jalen Suggs hasn't been getting, you know, those calls, especially when he's driving. I feel like he, he, he gets whacked a few times. Like when he went up for the rebound and it was him and CJ – 
it kind of felt, I know there was a shot clock violation, but we all saw, I mean, it was a foul on CJ. They didn't call it. He hit the floor. He said he takes a lot of contact, but he, you know, it's the dog in him. He just keeps it pushing. So shouts out to Jalen Suggs. When it comes to defense, I, you know, there's a ladder on this team. I think J.I. is at the top clearly, but Jalen Suggs is slowly but surely getting right there, man. He is he is great on the defensive end. Star Fox, I know you're a Kings fan. You're in the Magic spaces. You saw the Magic dub, apparently. How you feeling about us right now, man? Yo, yo, big dubs for, for you guys, man. I'm happy for y'all. <clears throat> what can I say, man? I'm very happy for you guys that you guys won today. We needed that. Helps us, and we should both look out for each other, man. We're both the same, almost the same team, but we're nice. Love Paulo. He did his thing, bro. Go Magic. I love it, man. Oh, man. Hey, shouts out to you, man. I'm, you, you might have me rooting for, for the Kings in a few of these games coming up unless they're playing the Magic, man. So, <laughs> shouts, shouts out yeah. to them. You, you guys are definitely having a very successful season. I don't, I definitely didn't expect the Kings to, to be in the position that they're in right now. So, I mean, shouts out to them. Um, definitely, the game tonight, we, we helped you guys out. I know the Pelicans, they're, they're one of the teams that you, you you might be facing when it comes down. So, we'll see. But, man, shouts yeah. out to the Magic, guys. Yeah, big, big shout out to Orlando Magic, bro. We believe in the Magic, bro. <laughs> have a good one. Hey, no, have a good one, man. Hey, anytime you ever in need of some hoops talk, you're, you're definitely more than welcome to join us here at the, in the Magic HQ spaces, man. 100% Star Fox. Orlando in L.A., you were up next before we go over to my man, Jay. Orlando, what do you got for us? Man, shout out, Paulo. Shout out, Paulo, man. What a performance. Shout out, Paulo. So, in my, so I was talking to my homies in the group chat. I don't know if y'all know who uh the the Twitter page I think it's Hate Central. They like basically talk shit about the NBA players that's playing bad. But they had sent that uh they had sent Paulo uh February stats in the group chat. And they was like, Oh, look at this guy. He's one for twenty eight, he sucked. I sent him I send him what he did today, crickets. They ain't say nothing. I'm like, We here. We here. Y'all can't talk shit about Paulo. Okay, he might be one for 28, but he's still going to give you buckets, though. Still going to give you buckets. Shout out, Kel. Oh, my God. Mark Kel. Shout out, Mark Kel, too. Shout out, Jalen Suggs for the defense. It was just great. Just a great game to watch. Just a great game to watch. Good wins. Not even – and not only shout out to them, I, I, I want to even take it to a step further. Shouts out to Caleb Houston and the Lakeland Magic. They got the dub tonight, too, man. Shouts out to the entire – the Magic organization from top to bottom got the dub today. Shouts out to the team, man. But with Paolo, that shooting is going to come. Like it, It's going to come. It, to expect a guy to have the entire package coming out of college, it, it's just very unlikely. Not every player is going to have it all. It's things that he's going to work on. And I'm sure Paolo sees – he sees the noise. He sees the noise. He's going to have a whole offseason in the in the NBA gym around NBA players now to just develop his game a little bit more. Man, I don't know when the – I believe the start of next season, like October or something around there. But in October next season, scary hours for anybody guarding Paolo Bancaro. Jay, and I'm going to say once oh, we get shooters, Markel going to average – Probably ten assists. I can easily, see it easily. As once people start knocking down these shots, though, because Markel finds people and and he finds them wide open. I don't understand. I they look like very simple plays, like but man, he he just has a knack for finding a guy at the right time. And not only at the right time, it's not like he makes a split decision, uh, second decision where you only have a little bit of time to get a shot off. No, he, he makes sure he gets you to pass and you have a little bit of time to get that shot off. If we have guys that are able to knock th- down those shots, it's going to be very scary hours for everybody else in the league. And that that's why I was pissed off at Gary. Cause I'm like, okay, he, he went two for five, but uh, you know, on paper, that's good. 40%. But I'm like, damn, it felt like you should have made all your shots. How open he Markel got you at least four of them. I was like, dude, when he was hitting him in the corner, I was like, you're wide open, dude. And with time. With shooting, that's something that 
we understood we had to address and we had an open roster spot. And we used it on a vet, so I'm not upset about it because our team needed a veteran, a veteran guy, especially not only a vet, it's somebody that's familiar with our organization, somebody that J.I. and Markell are familiar with. So I understand it in that aspect, but the the not addressing the shooting, you know, that's where I'm just a little confused there, but just not too sure what happened. And what what the the process was behind bringing Michael uh, Michael Carter back? Like I said, I understand the veteran presence, but we needed shooting. And looking at the free agents, see, not too many shooters out there. But uh, I don't know, guys. I'm um, Sam. We, I see get you our, got your, okay. we get our shooting in the drive. That's all I'm gonna say. No, I agree, man. You guys, you guys know I'm a, a Grady guy. I, I think Grady would fit perfectly on this team. Um, Sam, I see you got your hand up before we go over to Jay. Sam, what do you got? I just want to – I'm confused. Every day I see when our team's struggling shooting threes and then Caleb Houston comes up. I know everyone feels this way in this chat right now, so I know it's not just me, but it's like Caleb Houston comes up. That boy has one of the cleanest releases I've ever seen as an NBA fan, and he is just sitting in Lakeland. And I'm like, we keep talking about needing shooting and all oh, Grady Dick and oh, Brandon Miller's out there, all these guys. like – we got a three point shoot, like the epitome of just kick it out. He's gonna make it. He's gonna make it between a thirty five and forty, you know, point clip. I I just don't get it. But you know, teach their own. But I feel you. I feel you. It ain't no reason he should be in Lakeland right now. And 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 he has that that pure shot. He has size. You know where where he can play good defense. You know. I guess I get the the opportunity to have him just get more playing time in Lakeland where. Right now, Chumo Kiki isn't even cutting the rotation. So, a Caleb Houston would definitely not be cutting the rotation. So, getting a guy like this as many reps, I understand that. But I'm with you guys. We need shooting. He's a shooter. The The front office likes having size on the court. You know, he, he brings size. It, it, it really makes sense to have him here. But I get the development in the Lakeland, um, out in Lakeland. Jay, you were up next before we go over to my man, Dutto. Jay, what do you got for us? Um, well, just to kind of tie on to the, our whole uh, shooting dilemma that we're having before I get on to what I had to say. Uh, the, I mean, I feel like the shooting, we're still on a development stage as much as we're, you know, pushing and striving towards the play-in. I mean, just as uh, – just as – you know, he was mentioning, Sam was mentioning where, you know, we're we're having Caleb in development in the G League. You know, he's a 38 percent shooter. We just dropped Terrence Ross so we could shorten our, you know, solidify our rotation. He was a 38. Like as much as we wanted to complain about T. Ross, he was shooting 38 percent for three this year. So, you know, as you know, often or not often as he did it, if we can't bring somebody back in that's better than Terrence Ross, what was what's really the point of addressing that at this point in the season? I feel like they they did that to really just shorten down the rotation, shorten down the rotation, you know, solidify the guys in their spots and see what they can do for us towards the end of the push of the season. Now, as far as what I wanted to say on tonight's game, <clears throat> all right, I think I pretty much said it on any game where I've seen you know Paulo close it out the way he's been able to close out some of these games this season. It's and I can't even put Hito at this level because, like, we weren't really hoping Hito was going to take that, you know, final jumper. But if he did, you know, so be it. And the same with Rashard Lewis. He wasn't, like, our go-to guy any more than Jameer Nelson was. I feel like with the potential, the all-star caliber potential, um, with these guys being closers on top of that, we haven't had that type of player since Tracy McGrady with Franz Wagner, with Paolo Bancaro. These guys just pull up wins that we're we're so used to as fans of just losing. Like, oh, it's a four-point game. We're going to lose the game because somebody else on the other team is going to clutch it out. And that's not happening anymore. We, we got the guys for it now. And that's just, I mean, that's all I really got to put out about tonight's game because everybody else is going to put out everything else about who did this or what, what we need and what, what did that. No, nah, I'm just going to point out what. I'm so stoked for, and that's those guys right there. Uh, and you, you hit it right on the money, Jay. 
we got the guys now. Like, that's such a great feeling as a Magic fan to say we got the guys now. No, oh, and we've had – sorry to interrupt you, Stan, but we've had all-stars. We've had Nick Vucevic, Dwight Howard. Yeah, they were all-stars, but they, were, they weren't those guys we were, like, passing the ball down to hoping they can just hit that those final four or five, six buckets, you know, down the stretch. It, we haven't had that since T-Mac, I'll be honest. You know, I, I – I want to go as far to say as we haven't drafted a bucket since Penny, and we didn't even draft Penny. So no, we yeah, there, we haven't drafted I, a bucket since Penny since, like this. I mean, since we didn't draft, is it far out to say? And definitely anybody that you know knows otherwise and thinks otherwise, correct me. But I don't think we've drafted a bucket before. I mean, you could say, of course, Franz last season. I mean, we JJ we've, JJ Redick. No, we've drafted well. JJ Redick was a great was a shooter, shooter, but was you're not he a asking bucket, him to. Though? Like, was he like okay? He can make his not, own shot. He, yeah, you can't put JJ Redick out on the island in the NBA and expect him to, you know, get baskets. He wasn't doing that for us, Bryce. Yeah, no, I man, shout out to you, Jay. I, I re- you really got me thinking now, like of Magic players that we've drafted that are just you know bucket getters, and I mean. We had McGetty for a little bit, and he had his little moment, you know. And uh, I'm trying to think of some Chauncey. others that we drafted and let go. We drafted Chauncey. Yeah, we had Chaun, but Chauncey was really never that bucket getter. He was that team, you know, that team. But he could get his buckets. So I'll grant, would be I'll grant him that. Team right now, no, 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 no I would grant would that. <laughs> Bro, why but, are we not talking about Mario Hazoni? Oh, Come on, stop oh. it, Aladipo. Oh. Yeah, Oladipo, but exactly. These guys that was another one that I was going to point out. Team. I mean, I know, like, Oladipo definitely. Correct. Chauncey was definitely Correct. a Detroit man. He's a, you know, Mr. Mr. Big Shot. But. No, but when you say drafted, you got to you gotta recognize oh, those guys, okay, whether or I not. I agree. But yeah. even, even that being said, are these guys the buckets that Paolo and, and uh, to a certain extent, Franz is? Nah. 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 I, I, I mean, I don't want to, you know, just be, I don't want to consider myself a prisoner of the moment, but I'm really trying to think back at guys that had this level of talent on the offensive end. And the Magic really hit, hit the front office really did that. That's all I can say. Ron Vasquez, bro. Like, who did you say? Fron Vasquez, baby. Yo, you had me. Real th- ones, you, no. you you really just had me pause there, and I just had to question my man. <laughs> um, I I ain't mad at you. At it, you were actually up next, man. How you feeling about the Magic win tonight? I just want to say, abracadabra, razzmatazz, slam dunk, sesame, hocus pocus, alakazam. Gonna set that spirit free, baby. I feel good, and if you don't feel good. I don't know what to say. I mean, obviously, we got our issues. We need a shooter. We need a shooter so bad. We need so many shooters. I just keep looking forward to hopefully drafting Grady Dick, Jed Howard, Brandon Miller, somebody, so that Markel can dish it to somebody who he knows is going to hit a bucket, right? And once that happens, his dime numbers are going to go up considerably. He's going to look more and more like the point guard that we really and truly need, even if his shooting isn't there. If he can maintain this midi, if he can maintain where he's at with his free throws, because he's shooting a pretty impressive uh, percentage right now at the line, but you can't get a lot of assists if people aren't making shots off your passes, right? And um, I'm just looking forward to the draft, to be honest with you. Playing or no playing, um, I really want to come out of this draft with a shooter, whether it's one pick or two, because Chicago looks like shit right now, and honestly, we this pick might not convey. So that's all I got to say. Uh, and I think you know Markel. Next season is going to be Markel. I, I think the the season where, of course, if he stays healthy, we can really judge Markel Fultz and all these takes where he's the point guard of the future and things like that. That's when we can really evaluate that because Markel with the pick and roll, Markel passing it to. Um, Paolo or Franz, Markel lobbying it to Wendell. And and like you said, whoever we draft, Markel dishing it to Dick would be great, um, to Grady Dick. It, that would be just... And, and it's a contract year for Markel. Like, don't forget that. Like, next year is the last year that we have him under contract. So what's going to happen there? Like, yeah, no. That's always a huge factor. 
I, I think he he himself understands that he's the leader of, of this team. You know, he's the floor general. It's going to be that contract year. It's going to be a show and show and prove year. And I, I think he's ready for that task. I think he's going to, you know, I know people look at Jason Tatum as that number or should have been that number one pick, but I think Markel Fultz is just going to really bring it. He's going to bring that number one pick energy that I see him bring in certain games on both sides of the ball. So it's going to be a fun season for him, or at least him having it this half season and a full season next season. It's going to be really fun for him. I agree. Full season is going to be a big deal. But to your point about Jason Tatum, it's easy to have revisionist history. Like, yes, he got hurt the rat, with the thoracic outlet syndrome. But he was a fucking number one. Nobody was questioning that Markel was number one in that draft. Nope. Like, say what you will about Danny Ainge and his mad hattery. Like, everyone was taking Markel number one. Yeah. I, I, I was at work this week, and Bryce was actually making fun of me because I do everything at work but work. But I was watching the, the the clips from that draft, and you know nobody, everybody was saying Markel Fultz, just the perfect piece, the the guy to get that Philly team together, and it's really looking like he's the perfect piece to get this Orlando Magic team together because we saw a five and twenty team at the beginning of the season. We were talking full on tank, full on Wemby. It was disgusting talk in these spaces, just disgusting talk. And Markel came back, Cole came back our identity started to form and now we're at 26 games. Like Sam said, we're a half game away from what Vegas had us at. So man, this, the improvement has been phenomenal. And I personally, I just view it as having Markel Fultz. That's been the game changer this season. Dotto, you had your hand up. I'm sorry. I think I skipped you one time, man. So I'm getting back to you, Dotto. How you feeling about the magic tonight, man? No, it's all good, mate. All good. Um, yeah, no, I'm stoked because I don't know about you, lads, but in Australia, our uh, sports bet, like our local betting agency, had the magic over at 25 and a half wins. <clears throat> so I put four grand on it. So I just won eight grand. I'm fucking stoked. Um, yeah, on the uh, on the win, it's pretty good. Mark Hill was awesome. Carlo, awesome. But I had one of my mates send me that fucking... NBA hater Twitter page this morning, so I've been getting stuck into him since the game. It's been oh, it was a great, it was a great bounce back game. I am a little bit worried about Wendell though. Like, yeah, I don't know how people see him as part of the like untouchable core going forward. He's really struggling. How much is that due to injury? I'm not too sure, but uh, yeah, he's just not. I don't know. I'm not out on him. He's just just not doing it for me. But um, but yeah, and it's I suppose you can look at it. How bad it, like our shooting is pretty bad, it's horrific, really. And you can look at it as a positive. Like we're still winning and like taking it to these teams with like no outside threat. It's crazy. So we just need to go bang bang draft the two two of the best shooters on the board at the time, and we only really need one of them to hit, and then then we're set. So yeah, no, that's it, mate. Yeah, no, I mean, shouts out to you, Dodo. That that's shouts out to you for winning that bet. And, guys, I don't know if you heard him. Dotto said with him winning that bet that he's going to buy everybody in here a Orlando Magic jersey. Did yeah. I hear that correctly? That, that's the shout out to you, man. You are the man for that. Shouts out to the, the Magic just keep winning tonight, ladies and gentlemen. We got half off Papa John's. We got Dotto buying those jerseys. He got eight grand, he said. So it, it, it's a really good time to be a Magic fan tonight. I see a few hands up. Uh, Rich, we're going to go to you first and then over to my man, Orlando in L.A. Rich, what do you got for me? Uh, honestly, this is something that was from way earlier, but I just want to say real quick, I think it's just really weird that like we, we kind of have to accept the fact that the Magic will bring up Caleb soon. MCW and Schofield are going to be playing the games before he does again for us, which is kind of like a weird thought to have. But also, like I want to say this real quick because that will make me really think about something. Is that like when we have these, those games where, like, Wendell isn't getting it, done, getting it done and like, Mo's doing his best, but, like, it's also not getting it done, that's those games where we got to bring, like, Goga in. Because, bro, I was so upset with that last Pacers game because when Goga was in, that was some of the best defense I saw. And did you see – and y'all noticed how, like, Tyrese Halliburton's passes weren't working when he was in, right? Because he knows how he passes. That's all I'm going to say. You know, and so for me, the MC Knights, I mean, we're going to just go ahead and talk about it now. The MC Dub. 
signing. I mean, I said earlier I liked it, but it's not addressing that shooting need. So you have to question what the – and when I say question, I don't mean like, hey, oh, well, what the hell are you guys doing? I mean, like, I just would like to know what the front office's focus is. Is it – and it seems to be just developing these young guys, just developing, just having – somebody there to hold these guys accountable, which MC Dub seems to be that guy to hold these young guys accountable. A, a guy like Jalen Suggs, I'm sure, I mean, that they're going to, they're pretty much a mirror game of when they were, you know, a little bit younger. So I understand that, but I think the front office knows these young guys want playing, the, uh, the fans want playing and, you know, so the front office, it's whatever they want to do. At the end of the day, the fans, you know, we're we're, just, we're going to keep watching the product no matter what. But not getting the shooting, how do you guys feel about us not getting that shooting? I know, you know, you guys are saying we'll, we'll address that in the offseason, but we had to make that signing. Are you guys okay with bringing in just the vet and not the shooting? Or how do you guys feel about that? What shooting was available? So that is a very valid question. I, I, yeah, I'm not looking at anybody, any names that really, you know, that move the needle in terms of shooting. I, I don't. I mean, we 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 bought out Terrence Ross. Like, like if we're not going to get somebody back better than Terrence Ross, like what what are we what were we really looking for? Like the front office wasn't really looking to grab more shooters. Like I was mentioning earlier, it's it just seems like we're just you know trying to give our, you know, guards and wings, you know, more of a solid role, in my opinion. Yeah, Jay, I I think you're completely right. I don't, I don't think as much as we want to say we're, we're coming for the play in, this is going to sound pessimistic. We're, we're not coming for the play in guys. That's it's, we're going to, we're going to compete, which is very different than where we were last year. And we're going to say we're coming for the play in. I don't think we're going to make it. I think the point is developing. I think the shooting our front office is banking on the fact that our roster is going to get better. Jalen Suggs is a fucking menace on defense. I don't know that I've seen a guard this young, this good as a defender in my 34 years of living. But my man on offense is brutal. But I think that's going to come. I think his time's gonna come. You guys, you guys have single handedly made me a believer in Jalen Suggs coming around the offensive end. So I think our front office is banking on development. Ever since December, it seems that Jalen Suggs, and I want to say later in December, like kind of towards the newer year, to be honest, because um, I know he was out for a while. So ever, I, all right. So ever since he came back from that injury. He's kind of had a different mindset on defense where he's more in your face now. I know he had good defense before, but it was just that good defense. Now he's playing great defense. Jalen Suggs is everywhere. Just com- he's Like you said, he's a menace. He is a war criminal on the court. He's just everywhere. He gets his hand everywhere. He's in your face. He's going up against big men. He's always, like I said last week, every time seems to get a strip steal no matter what. Jalen Suggs' defense, it's there. It's already NBA perfect. That offensive game, hopefully it, it develops. We, we see that the confidence is there. That's the one thing with Jalen Suggs that has never seemed to waver. It's his confidence, so shouts out to him for that. Slowly. His game will slowly pick up. We've seen that in his young career. He, he's gotten injured a lot, so now is a good stretch of him not being injured, and we're seeing, you know, flashes of development. Orlando in L.A., you had your hand up before we go over to my man. Steven, Orlando, what do you got for us? I was going to say I had a few points to touch on. I was going to say I still don't understand how people had Jabari going number one over Paulo. I don't understand how you watch Jabari highlights or even his games, whatever, and watch compare that to what Paulo was doing on the court and say that Jabari was, you know, a better fit to be the number one pick. That's that's ludicrous. I don't I just I don't get how people say I understand the forty two percent from three, but I expect more than a than a jump shot if I'm 
spend the number one pick on you. But and I want to say it with Markel, you guys probably can't answer the question, but if Markel's shoulder is fully healed, why hasn't his jump shot returned back to normal? Anybody want to take that? All right. Well, uh, I don't. I don't think he's ever said it's fully healed. He's had to. I believe he's mentioned he's had to adjust his game and his shot to the to the issue that he's had with his shoulder. So yeah. I don't know if he's completely healed up at this point. Yeah. No. What I was gonna say is when you have an injury that's that significant, even when it heals, you've got like years of your game that you've adjusted specifically to cater to that injury. So you know it's like he's basically played the last three years of his career kind of trying to heal from that injury. And he's not going to be like, Oh, I've been playing like this for three years. Now that I'm finally healed, I'm going to get back to it. Like the shot he has now as weird and as jank as it looks, it's kind of like what his shot is going to be. And now it's going to take like even more unlearning than I think the coaching staff and the training staff wants to put in to get him back to the shot that he had back in college, just because of the amount of psychological work that that would take him to get back to that spot. And and it's not only that. I mean, he he just broke the hundred game mark for play games played for our Orlando Magic. So, like, he's still early on in learning how to develop that new jumper that he has. Yeah, thoracic outlet is like not just a physical injury too. It's like a neurological one as well. So like the dots aren't they don't really connect in the beginning, right? And and I think that's a, a huge piece of it that I think people forget, like his brain telling his shoulders to be able to lift up and shoot in his normal motion that he had in college, that that's gone. And him having to rehab and then battle ACL tears and toe breaks and all that shit, like it's crazy the stuff that this guy's gone through and just I mean, when I can't remember his draft year because it feels like he's been in the league for 17 years now, but it's it's probably been, like, what, five years? Was he drafted in 2017? Yeah. 20, 2018? Yeah, that's crazy. It's wild. Yeah, no, and, and Markel is somebody that – I think the Magic have been the perfect organization for a guy like that. Uh, he, he seems like a very humble guy. You know, he comes in, does his work, and does a – tremendous job on the court man he is a tremendous hooper he's just had a lot of adversity to go against and he's gonna continue proving guys wrong and you know people that say well Markel shot he doesn't want to take three pointers oh he's not the greatest man in today's game with 10 at 10 54 left in the first quarter Markel folks confidently pulled up for a three-point shot and drained it so the fact of him not being able to, you know, make those shots, I think that's a thing of a pass now. I think it's more of him taking more shots, making more shots. People will say, okay, well, he's comfortable taking the three-point. It's going to it's gonna grow with more time in the league. I, I look at him like a guy that can develop his three-point. I mean, Rajon Rondo, when he came in the league, he had no three-point. I mean, he did, still doesn't have a three-point at all, but it got better. Jason Kidd, I, I when he came in the league, I'm not looking at Jason's kid three three point shot that great. Man, you guys saw Jason Kidd in Dallas; he he was taking those three. So slowly but surely, Markel is going to get into a becoming an average to good shooter. He's confident enough, and man, Stephen, you got your hand up. You saw the game tonight, man. I think you saw it at a restaurant. You said, "How you feeling?" Stanley, Stanley, Stanley. And what up, Bryce? Uh, shout out to you guys uh, for, again, hosting another killer after game uh, spaces. Um, I wasn't planning on talking about Mark Hell, but I kind of sort of feel like I have to after the last couple of minutes. Uh, Stanley, I'm sorry, man. You're out of your mind. There's no way that Mark Hell is ever going to be a, like, maybe league averages his ceiling at best from three. So average, seen, the, um, average the good. Eh, yeah, but dude, that's even a stretch in my opinion, man. Like I've seen Michael Carter, Michael Michael Carter Williams drain open threes before. That doesn't make him a good three point shooter or even league average. Like 
I I'm sorry. I just like I have no confidence ever in Markel ever being a three point shooter, even average. And like that's okay. He doesn't need to be. We just have to find shooting elsewhere. I think it's more realistic to get like Franz up to like thirty eight percent than Fultz to like thirty five percent. And like to me, that's more important and going to be more valuable to this team if you get Franz as a better shooter than Fultz because it's just I don't know. It's just. I think it's more realistic in my opinion. Um, but like speaking of shooting, I wanted to like touch back on, uh, I ain't mad at it. Sorry. I had to look at your, your title when you were talking about um, like this team and like shooting and like being built for like development right now. And just like the whole conversation of shooting this front office, in my opinion is like, they have their guys that they're focused on. Um, you know, they're focused on the development of the five starting unit. They're focused on the development of uh, Suggs and Cole and J.I. and Bowl and, you know, to an extent, Mo Wagner. Um, you know, like we see that the is their priority. We see that Bowl, after multiple games of being horrendous, is still getting given playing time, even though, like, it should be Chuma in a lot of our eyes. We just know that that is not their priority to to win not that winning is a bad thing and not that they're not focused on winning and like hoping for wins like it's obviously a good but like their focus is on development so like when we go back to the question of well where were the shooters why didn't they go for shooters well the question the answer to that is because there's no space for them in the rotation we have a shooter in Caleb he doesn't have an opportunity to play because they're more prioritizing, hey, let's see what Bull has. Hey, let's see what Cole and Jalen have for the end of the season. There might be more opportunity next season, but this season, this team is fully invested. So when they bring on a guy like MCW, it's not because they didn't they couldn't find like a Wayne Ellington who is a better shooter that's on the on the market right now. They could have gotten that guy. It's more so because they believe that like an off court presence a guy that will get into them in practice, a guy that will coach them up on the bench. Like I personally, I think MCW would be a great coach in this league, at least assistant coach at some point in his career, um, you know, going forward. But like, like they, they probably find that more valuable than the guy who might play five games and get a little bit of meaningful minutes and like Wayne Ellington or something like that, like some, you know, X, whatever shooters available on the market uh, because they're just more invested in seeing what they currently have with this young squad. So, like, I don't know. I don't want to ramble too on, but I feel like that's, like, kind of my point on, like, where's the shooting? Well, it's just because they're just more focused on seeing what this current squad has. They're not ready to make that consolidation trade to where they're ready to give up on a Cole or a Jalen or a Bull. Um, you know, they want to see this through. You're 100 percent right, and and that is the the reason development was the reason that I thought um, towards the trade deadline we weren't going to make any major moves because we were all about development. We are. It's kind of funny being a, a Magic fan because we can have the signs in front of us, and we're still going to try and find a, another way to look at things. Like you, you like you just said, Stephen. There's no minutes. There's no rotational minutes for, let's say, if we did bring in one of these shooters. So to have a guy like MC Dub, who's he's going to play very minimal minutes to if any minutes, he's going to just more than likely be one of those player coaches. That's right there. But development, that, that that's the, the big word. And that's something that throughout the whole season, I think, just us as Magic fans, and me included, we, we forget that it's just all about development. It, 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 it is, dude. And, like, if you think about it, too, um, Stanley, it's like the, the play-in mean more, means more to us as fans than it does to the front office. And that's not, like, that's not a bad thing, I don't think. I mean, we are, we are super desperate as fans for this team to get to the play-in because, like, it's fun. It means it was off the backs of the young kids, these 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 wins are off the, you know, the, yeah, the young players. Um, it's exciting, but like, we also know that if we make the plan, we ain't making, we ain't doing shit in the playoffs. Front office knows that too, but they do know that like 
playing these meaningful games is, is valuable and extremely valuable, but also like, think about how much data this, in, this, like the, the front office is getting from these games um, that they wouldn't have if they were tanking right now. Right. Um, so I don't know, man, like, I think like winning is obviously a bonus and it's obviously great. And it's, it's a great step in development where we are at and where we're going to be at the end of the season. But like, if we miss the plan, I don't think the front office is going to like blink an eye on, on if the season was a failure or not, they're going to think it's a huge success. Just in, in my opinion, I think it's already a huge success. So um, sort of, sort of my thoughts there. No, a hundred percent. The The season was, I mean, to everybody, it might be different. At least for me, it was a success the moment we drafted Paolo Bancaro. That was, all right, cool, we have our guy. That was, let's see what this season about. Another plus was clearly a couple weeks ago when we got to 22 wins. We surpassed that. That's a big stepping stone for a team because now we see the progression. We see the progressions, and you're right. As fans, this means a lot more to us making the plan because we just want more meaningful ba- meaningful basketball. We're just greedy because we want to see the Magic play at all times. We want the Magic getting the attention. Oh, these guys are in the play-in. So it definitely means a lot more for, for us um, than the front office. I'm sure the players want it as well. But you won't see the front office mad if, if we miss the, the play because regardless, we're playing – meaningful games down the stretch compared to last season where it was man can we get the season over with so we can get to the lottery right now it's we're we're kind of on the edge of our seats whether i mean i know a lot of people are you know still on the 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 playing train a lot of people are jumping off but it has you on the edge of your seat this season compared to a lot of the other seasons i'm excited we got about what 2019 games left I'm excited for these next couple of games because they're all meaningful games. And, and something I want to touch on, it's we, I don't think anybody's brought it up tonight is, and I don't think we'll see him until I, I believe the game is the next home game is Monday, but J.I. not traveling with the team. I, I know they said that he might rejoin us on the trip, but J.I. not traveling with the team. I like that they're being precautious with him. I'm not going to lie. I I like that they're being precautious with J.I. He's, at the end of the day, he's the front office's investment. He's the highest played player, so he's gotten playing time. If it's a little bit of soreness, let's not risk it at all. Like you guys said, it's not about the play on playing push, so I'm fine with J.I. sitting out tonight. How do you guys feel about the whole J.I. um, situation? I mean, it's not really a situation, but... I mean, I'm just going to say it's, like, obviously it's kind of a concern um, because, you know, you you hear about guys like AD in the league that are injury prone um, and no team and no fan base ever wants to believe that they have one of those players. And then when they do have one of those players, it's tough to accept that they are injury prone, even if they are. Um, And I think it's just, you know, part of it might have to do with conditioning. But I heard on the six-man show I was listening on the other day, and they were talking about how it's a concern that it's a recurring injury. And it's, you know, on the injury report, it wasn't, um, you know, game management or rest management or trying to build him back up with, uh, you know, his reps. Um, And so I I don't know. I get the whole point of, like, taking it careful. But at this point, it's, it's more, you know, he is our number one investment. We've seen since he's been back the difference that having, you know, Jalen Suggs and J.I., you, we could be a top five defense easily in the league. So it's it's impossible to deny that J.I. is valuable. Um, but it's just a matter of, you know, play it careful at the end of this year. And then next year is honestly going to be huge, both for the team and for us as a fan base. Because it's just like, you know, if J.I. Got, J.I. gets out there and he's pushing 22, 24 minutes a game and he can't stay healthy, then I don't know if he's someone as valuable as he can be if he can't be consistent, then the best, you know, ability is availability. And I don't know if he's proven that enough for us yet. So. Yeah, no, I, I, you, I could have, that's my, that's one of my biggest thing. Availability. We don't, uh, people clown on, like you, you, you said it, AD street clothes. We don't want J.I. to get, we know he's the minister of defense. He handles the defensive end. I'm, I'm going to hold off on the, the, the concern because I, I'm with you, though. 
it does bring the thought of concern in my head, but I'm going to hold off on that simply because I think the front office is just very, very precautious as well. Very, like, overly precautious, especially with a guy, like you said, J.I. Man. It's going to be, yeah. like I said, they said he's going to maybe join us on the on the road trip. We'll see if we get that report from Kobe tomorrow or um, on Friday or Saturday. Is it, yeah, and I'm not I'm not on the pessimistic side of JI at all. I'm literally walking around in my kitchen doing the dishes while I'm listening to you guys with my JI jersey on. I haven't taken it off since the game's over. Now, I'm probably one of the biggest JI guys in the chat, and I want to see him play. I want to see us invest in him, and I believe in him. I just you know I want us to be careful. Is this the only year that we don't have um, stipulations on how many games he plays? I, I think we do next year as well. Like next year, he's guaranteed seven point six million, and this year, I think, I think because we're past a certain date and he's played, his seventeen point four is fully guaranteed. But some of this makes me wonder if it's John and Jeff angling for some flexibility. I could be wrong though. It's it's not. Um... It's not games played anymore. Games played was only affected uh, last season. That was last year. Uh, Now it's more or less what is guaranteed is if we waive him. So next year, the 7 million or whatever, 7.5, is if we waive him by X date, that is what's owed, not the full 17. Gotcha. Um, Which we're not going to waive him. Which we're not going to waive him. My man's getting 17.5. He's getting his his money. Um, Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's not games played. That that was just last year with like what, like basically giving us options if we decide to waive him. This is what is owed at that point or that point. So um, yeah, my 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 thoughts with Ji, if it's okay if I jump in here for a second with this, is is like I think I'm more concerned about the game before than this game um, with with like him not playing. You know, if it's two separate things, if one was just like recovery from the 16 minutes, then this one being the hamstring, because like I was talking, I literally recorded a podcast for the close up magic um, at the start of this game. Uh, So I actually missed like most of the first quarter or so. Um, But I was talking with my guest and we were, we were talking about his injury and we were just like kind of discussing like, sure, he's had a hamstring issue. And like he had to have surgery on it and this very well could be connected, but also like he's a professional athlete who plays a sport where hamstrings are constantly an issue for a lot of people. Like you look at Chris Paul, you look at Harden, you look at, you know, a dozen or so other guys in the league that, that have hamstring issues that they just have to manage throughout their their careers and this just could be one of those moments so i'm not like a whole lot concerned today um now if in a week from now he's still dealing with it okay that's when my concern level will go up but like as as you all were saying earlier this is the front office's like baby they have no reason to make him play through discomfort um i i don't care if he plays 20 games this season, the rest of the season, I'd be psyched if he played 10 games the rest of the season. What's more important to me is him going into the off season healthy. Um, than if he plays through like minor discomforts through the end of this year. So like, that's kind of my hope is that it's not something major. And it's just like, he's a professional athlete and you know, there was just no reason to let him play through something like, like this. And it, it, but, you know, who knows? Maybe I'm wrong and maybe it's connected to a surgery and I have no idea. But that's like my hope and thought process through this. And and that's what kind of makes it a little hard to get, you know, I, I'm saying the word concern, but that's, I guess, a little bit aggressive of a word. But concern because the front office, they're just very cautious with this guy. So they're going to hold him out if his pinky hurts. It has nothing to do with his previous injury. They will hold J.I. out. If J.I. has a sore throat, J.I. will not be playing that game. I don't know if you guys can uh, remember that Terrence Ross, where I I think it was his own podcast, but he was saying that, oh, well, if Markell is 
if Markel is playing, I'm definitely playing. You know, they, they have a different standard for different guys. And J.I. is just one of those guys where the slightest thing, they're not going to take a chance with him. They're, he's a bonus this season, a complete bonus. I, at one point, we thought about J.I. was going to be a bonus for us last season, but it's this season where he's the bonus. And next season is where, okay, we have J.I. back full time. At this point, everything he's given us is just an extra add-on. Um, Rich, I see you got your hand up. What do you got for us, man? So with the J.I. thing, uh, I'm not going to lie. I was I was one of the people who was, like, overly concerned at first. I'm not going to lie about that. Uh, at the time, like, it is just an extra game, honestly. Like, it, it might just be something small, like hamstring injuries, like, they suck, but, like, they do kind of happen a lot in sports. So, hopefully, like, this isn't going to be a, like, a serious one. Hopefully, something that he can just work through and get back. Um, I do want to say that, like, from, like, seeing how it happened now and seeing how things worked out, if it wasn't for the fact that the Pistons game ended up being so close, I would have been fine sitting J.I. that game instead of the Pacers game because the Pacers game, we, we kind of needed him for sure. But um, that's just how I feel about it. I feel, I feel like J.I., uh, is sitting obviously right now, and I definitely don't want him to come back for Milwaukee because Milwaukee is on a 14 game win streak and they're a fucking wrecking ball and would probably destroy this man's hamstring and knees, and that scares me. So I'm cool with him sitting uh, next game. But like you all are saying, like if it's another three or four games after this, then I think we probably can all. Uh, have some concern. And so I, I know I know the Bucks are on a 14 game winning streak, but as of Wednesday, they will be 14 and one in their last 15, thanks to the Orlando Magic. Because <clears throat> we're two and one coming out of the All Star break. You know, I, I know we had a a tough defeat, but we're, we're two and one coming out of the All Star break, guys. So we'll see. I mean, like I said, we do have Milwaukee coming up, guys. So. Before we wrap it up tonight, what are you guys' thoughts going into that game? What are your expectations? Do you have any expectations? Let me know. Yo, Stan, when yeah. how many uh, how many uh, games did the Celtics win before we beat them at their house? Wait, how many games were the Celtics? What? Yeah, well, remember when we had that those back to back wins? The Celtics were on a, a big win streak. You remember how much it was? Oh, it, was it fourteen? Uh, I don't think it was fourteen. I think it was oh. ten. But all I'm saying is we play up to these teams, man. I'm uh I'm excited. I think we can. I don't know if if we can win this game, but I certainly think it's going to be a close and hard fought game. Um, and I mean, why not, man? This team, this team has shown fight when we don't really believe fully in them to go in and beat you know a, a contender. And we beat we beat the Celtics three times this year. You know, we beat the Warriors. We, so. I'm hyped, bro. This is going to be a fun game. And can I say, I really like when we play on the on the road. I don't know what our record is. I'm not – but I feel like we play really solid basketball on the road. Recently, yes. Uh, early in the season, no. All right. Um, I think I'm at the point where I don't have I'm, – I'm – I've realized that I benefit as a fan and also just, you know, my, my physical general health when I go into games without a sense of expectation. Um, Cause, and that takes a little bit of like palate cleansing after each game, but like you have a game like tonight where the defense is awesome. We hold the Pelicans to 93 points. You know, you're frustrating Brandon Ingram, you're frustrating CJ McCollum and Paolo has a good night. So, you know, you kind of subconsciously carry that into the next game and you're like, all right, so Paolo, you know, he's going to get going now. And, you know, because we were able to frustrate, uh, you know, CJ McCollum and Brandon Ingram, maybe that means that, uh, you know, defensively we can, we can get into, you know, some of these Bucks players head, maybe not Giannis. Cause you know, Giannis is kind of like a league of his own, but going into each night, instead of having like an expectation of, Oh yeah, for sure. We're going to win this or for sure. We're going to lose. It's just kind of like, you know what? This team's young. I think we forget that a lot, uh, especially after wins. We forget that a lot. And they just have a really erratic sense of play um, to where some nights they're going to come, come in and just show out and play, above their potential sometimes it seems like and then sometimes they're going to show up and they're going to look like one of the youngest teams in the NBA and so I just think we need to instead of I know we're going to so I'm not saying don't do it but like the bed the more we can just kind of suppress expectations and just enjoy the product that we have instead of having expectations going into each game 
um, you know, especially at this phase uh, before next year and the year after when we're really making playoff pushes. I think that that's, you know, the best of, of what we can expect from this team. I said this last phase, Sam, uh, that I attended. Sorry, it was a few it was a few games ago, but every win from here on out is like pure profit, right? From a business sense, we're just fucking printing money now. So everything is just great. Every single dub we can get from here on out is furthering our young guys' development. It's going over the Vegas odds, and it's and it's appeasing a fan base that's starving for it, right? Like. I, I'm I'm very happy with the way this season is turning out, even though we're still one of the bottom feeders of the league. It doesn't feel like it did last season, right? We I, I don't know how many games we lost by 20 or more last season, but I know it's significantly less this season, and that's a huge plus. No, no. I think the Magic... Like you said, house money. We are playing with house money right now. We're getting the fan base engaged. Amway's been rocking the past couple of games, guys. Amway has been rocking. This team has the city mobilizing again. I guess I, I, you could say that. It, it's an exciting time. Rich, you got your hand up. What do you got for me, man? So... I, I'm, I want. I want to see that. I want to try Sam's approach for these games now, and like actually try to like temper my expectations. But I do want to say this after like what Bryce said, because Bryce did make a valid point. Like we do seem to like show out against these big teams, and whether it's a close game, like win or loss, like if we come out and compete, I, I, and if we get the win too, I'm not gonna lie. I, I, I'm gonna be happy. I'm gonna be a little frustrated though, because I need them to do that for the games that we need to win. Like they need to come out against the games where like when it's a game where it comes like a, like a standings game like a game like actually determines standings. I need them wins. So, uh, but I, I like I said honestly, I kind of with Bryce. I, I have high expectations. Uh, I do want them to win. Uh, I am going to try to temper them as the, as it goes. If it does go the other way, but uh, I'm going in. I'm going in, um positive, positive. I want to be positive. So going in positive for this game. And I, I said last place that. On this road trip, we'd be going two and one. Milwaukee was one of those games that we'd be getting. We're pulling up to Milwaukee right now, and the Magic are feeling good. Real good. Guys, do we have any final thoughts before we wrap it up on this wonderful what well, is 12, 12 a.m. now on this wonderful Tuesday? Yo, you, you mentioned Charlotte last space, man. They're on a five game win streak, Sam, bro. I, I was like, I was. Yeah, you were clowning me. You were yeah, clowning I was me, right? clowning you for that. Yeah. And, but, I mean, they did lose uh, LaMelo. I uh, hope he gets well soon um, to a fractured right ankle today, unfortunately. So, um, that game does look a lot better than it did. Oh, definitely. But I, prayers I are for LaMelo, though. Yeah, no, no, prayers to LaMelo. I saw that it was like a non-contact injury as well. He just dropped back. So, that's always tough. The whole ball family, I mean, they're kind of a little – I'm not going to say they're injury prone, but – other than the guy in the G League, they're a little injury prone, but yeah, no, they're on a streak. That that was I saw them. I saw one of their games. That's why I said we're, we'd be winning this game and Milwaukee and losing at Charlotte. That's just how I was feeling. Now I'm feeling like we can, if we play, you know, what is it for, eight good quarters of basketball. You know, that even great. I feel like with good basketball, we can get it done. Just solid on both sides of the basket. I think we could we could get all three wins, but I'm still sticking to my two and one um, two and one prediction. Hey Stan, real quick, I did want to say this. I think it's kind of funny that like also this is kind of in, in terms of Charlotte. I think it's kind of funny that like Mark Williams is proving to Steve Clifford wrong. It's like, yeah, you can play the young guys because the young guys will get you double doubles every night. I don't think I haven't seen him not get one since he started. That's all I'm saying. I think it's funny because Steve Clifford, like, you know how he is with the young guys. Yo, but that's only because they traded Plumley. I don't think Clifford wanted to play Williams. I feel like the only reason he's getting played is because Plumley's not there anymore, even though he should have been playing the whole time. For real? Uh, yeah. Guys, this is always great. This is always fun talking Magic Hoops with you guys. Thank you to each and every one of you guys. I always want to always end the spaces off like this. It's fun talking Magic Hoops. We're going to be doing this again on Wednesday. Right? It's Wednesday. Yeah, it's, um, it's 12 o'clock. Thing got me confused. We'll be doing this again on Wednesday. 
Um, hopefully, after another dub in Milwaukee, the guys are confident. They're feeling themselves. Thank you all for joining us. Like I was in the soft guys, Magic City, Magic Together. You guys have a wonderful night, wonderful morning, wonderful evening, wherever you at. We'll see you guys on Wednesday.